Hello, 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 Instagram. Hello, friends in the Rhythm and Radiance Facebook group, going live in two places now and recording, which means this will be on YouTube at a later date, um, which I forgot to record last week's Rhythm Radio since it was my first time back in the swing in a while and it just totally slipped my mind. So I'm back and here to share about weekly rhythms. That is the theme this month, weekly rhythms. What are those rhythms, those rituals, those practices that we can do on a weekly basis that can help us crush our goals without crushing our souls? And today I'm going to be sharing a little bit about a weekly rhythm that I have known about for a long time. I've talked and written about it before, and you may also know about it, but the question is, are we doing it? And I find I'm like inconsistent with this one. I try to do it regularly, but it doesn't always happen. And that is the concept of the artist date. So you may be familiar with The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. And this book has been around for quite a while. I didn't even check. Um, since 1992. Goodness gracious, 1992, The Artist Way. And you do not have to be an artist to read this book. Or I should actually rephrase that. We are all artists in some way. You can be an artist as a parent. You can be an artist as a business person. Um, for me, art is not necessarily making art, although I try to get into a little bit more like actual creative practices, but it is about the idea of play and creativity. So artist dates, according to Julia Cameron, are basically dates of assigned play. And I'm going to read the definition that she has, and that is, it is a once weekly festive solo expedition to explore something that interests you. The artist date need not be overly artistic, but just think of she says, think of mischief more than mastery. It's uh, designed to fire up your imagination. They spark whimsy, they encourage play. Since art is about the play of ideas, they feed our creative work by replenishing our inner well of images and inspiration. When choosing an artist date, it is good to ask yourself, what sounds fun? And then allow yourself to try it. So for me, uh, because I find value in trying to have some consistency with my rhythms, my artist date is generally Friday afternoons. I set that side of time, that time aside, and I always set it aside. I don't always do an artist date, but I do set it aside. And I'm going to tell you a few of the artist dates that I have done and some of my regulars. So I would encourage you to, the, the more important thing is to give it a try versus to be fixated on thinking about what the perfect artist date is. And so for me, I generally shoot for Friday afternoons. So a solo experience that sparks inspiration for me is often as simple as going to the movies. I love a Friday afternoon solo movie date and that sparks inspiration inspiration. I love movies. I love acting. So to me, that like fuels my imagination and reading. I love reading. I read a lot of nonfiction, but for an artist date, I like to read fiction. So for example, my artist date last Friday, um, I was up in Wallingford, which is not an area I'm up in very often. And that is the same place where uh, there is a vineyard, Paradise Hills, that has my absolute favorite Chardonnay. <laughs> so I decided to go and buy a bottle for um, for my birthday, which is not, not for a month, but I figured I'd pick up a bottle um, to have since I was in the area. And while I was there, I decided that I would have an artist date and have a glass of the Chardonnay and read my book from the library, a book that is not about business, not about health, not about improving myself, it is just for fun, right? So that is an artist date. The week before, my artist date, and don't judge, was, and, and this is one of my regulars, is going to Ulta or Sephora and just playing. And just like trying different, face oils and trying different makeup colors, making a little palette on my hand, playing around, being creative. And that really 
you know, that's super simple and you don't need an hour to do it, right? You can just work these into, you know, your people are saying hi on <laughs> Instagram, hi on Facebook. Um, just work it into your regular routine. And what this does, having this dedicated, intentional time for inspiration and play helps to fuel your inspiration and energy in other um, aspects of your life, <clears throat> whether it be with your work, coming up with a new pitch deck or finding a way to solve a problem. Um, so some artist days might be a little more involved. Some that I like, one of my favorites is going to the botanical gardens, usually like once a summer and just wandering around and taking photos. That is a huge one for me. Um, taking my book to the beach in the summer is another one could be going to a museum, it could be making art, it could be creating, you know, um, an art, a, a creative art journal, it could be so many different things. The point is just to take that intentional time for play and creativity. So that is the artist date with from Julia Cameron, and I recommend the book, it's been around forever. And um, a similar book, or not a similar book, but a similar idea is uh, comes from the book Tranquility by Tuesday with Laura Vanderkam. And I had the chance to meet Laura last month. Um, we did this in our book group and we love it when the authors come and join us or Zoom in, which is usually the case. And she talks about uh, taking an evening, take one night for you. So maybe it's an evening that you do your artist date, but uh, the idea also that she describes, which is in the similar vein, is having that one night where you're doing something that's just for you. Maybe you, uh, for me, I also do a dance, at least one dance class a week. Right now I'm doing either burlesque with heels on Tuesday night, <laughs> or I'm doing liquid motion on Sundays. So for, for me, that it isn't a solo um, experience of so taking a dance class, but you still get into that zone of doing something that's like play and creativity. So that is my invitation for you in terms of a weekly rhythm that you can cre create a practice for this in your life so that you can crush your goals without crushing your soul. If you have a lot of goals like I do, and I know many other of you do as well, it's important that you are fueling your soul, right? You're fueling your soul. You're not just looking at the tasks to get done, the revenue generating activities. You're finding ways to fuel your soul as well. So we'll be back next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time with some other ideas on weekly rhythms that can help support your life. And thanks for listening. See you next time.